Hello everyone, it's Sal here. Welcome back to another perfume video. I hope you're doing well. So today I'm going to be answering 25 perfume related questions in hopefully under 25 minutes, um, but we'll see how that goes. So this was a really interesting tag video created by the lovely Alithia Marie here on YouTube. I'm sure if many of you um, already love watching perfume videos on YouTube, you will most likely be familiar with her videos, but just in case you're not, I'm going to leave a link to her channel in the description box below. Um, her videos are absolutely fantastic, they're so pleasant to watch, they're so relaxing. If you are new to my channel then a very warm welcome, I create new perfume videos every single Wednesday and Saturday minimum, but quite often I'll post more videos if I have extra time. So if that's something which interests you then please feel free to click the subscribe button below. And also if you would like to be notified every time I post then feel free to activate the notification bell as well. So as always, get yourself comfortable, grab yourself a drink and a snack, comment below your drink of choice. Today I have some, oh what is this again? It's lemon and ginger with manuka honey tea, I believe. Wait, it might say on the label. Lemon, ginger and manuka honey tea. So without further ado, let's get started with the video. Uh, question number one is how many perfumes do you have? So funnily enough, you guys, I often lose track of how many fragrances I have in my collection. It's just not something that I really monitor. Um, and my collection's always changing, so I'm always purchasing new fragrances. I'm usually um, decluttering fragrances quite often as well, so it's hard for me to actually keep track of how many fragrances I own. But I would say um, currently it will be in the region of uh, 50 to 60 bottles most likely, but again, I don't really know for sure. Um, I would say between 50 and 60 bottles. Question two is what is my favourite fragrance family? Now I actually find this question quite difficult to answer because uh, more recently I've been quite into my floral woody scents like Danger Pour Femme from Rocha. I love that fragrance at the moment you guys, it's one of my favourites. Um, so I would say that's probably your uh, floral woody vanillic kind of scent, quite woody, um, a little bit sweet but not overly so, so that's quite different to the usual type of fragrance I would normally go for. So what I would normally go for is quite a sweet um, floral woody gourmand fruity floral type of fragrance, I would say. Um, either a floral woody scent or a fruity floral type of fragrance with some vanilla, that's usually what um, I go for, but of course it can vary depending on the fragrance. <laughs> Question number three is how many sprays do I use when I apply perfume? So it can vary depending on the fragrance, of course if it's a really loud strong uh, fragrance then I would spray less perhaps, but on the whole I would say five to six sprays, sometimes more though. I don't really keep track to be honest, I just sort of spray it um, and it varies depending on the fragrance, but on average I would say probably around five sprays. Question four is where do I spray? So um, I spray usually on my wrist, I spray in the crook of my arm, and then I usually gently dab, I don't rub the wrists but I dab them, and then I apply it um, kind of behind my ears like this. I will spray once behind my neck, I will spray it in my hair and on my clothes. So that's generally where I spray my fragrance. Question five is what is my favourite perfume of all time? So I spent quite a while thinking about my answer to this question and ultimately I have chosen my beautiful Delina Exclusive from Parfum de Marly. Now this, funnily enough, is a fragrance which I really don't wear that often, you guys, um, and I think that is simply because it's just so dressy to me and it's so magical, like it's just so special and amazing and to me it's a complete masterpiece. For some reason it just doesn't feel right to grab this fragrance and spray it before I go to work or something like that. Um, or just for an everyday sort of situation. It doesn't feel quite right wearing this kind of fragrance to those kind of scenarios, so as a result I don't wear it that often. But, um, you know, if this was the only fragrance I owned then of course I would wear it more often and I just think it's absolutely fantastic. It really is, it's an amazing fragrance and to me it almost does it all. It's kind of woody, it's rosy, it's powdery, it's vanillic, it's fruity, floral. Oh my goodness, it is so beautiful, I can't even put it into words, you guys. It's just truly an amazing fragrance. Oh my goodness, I actually forget how good this is. Um, I've not smelt it in quite a wee while, but it is truly just the epitome of an amazing masterpiece fragrance. It smells very classy to me, it smells extremely elegant, very, very refined. 
So I would say I would say probably this perfume here because of that wow factor that it has. It's not often that a perfume will have such a wow factor to me. So of course I can enjoy many, many perfumes and I can have many favourites that I wear more often than this. But this perfume to me has a real wow factor about it. It's really something special and it's that's not something I can say too often about perfumes in general. So for that reason I would choose Parfum de Marley Delina Exclusif. Question six, what is my least favourite perfume of all time? Um, there have been quite a few that I've tried and I really, really didn't like, but um, off the top of my head, I really don't like La Belle, Jean-Paul Gaultier La Belle. I find it just so unbelievably sweet. I actually am quite surprised that so many people enjoy that fragrance because to me, it's just this really syrupy, really thick, headache inducing fragrance. Um, and it's very flat to me as well. It doesn't have a lot to it. It's just this really linear, annoying, flat, unbearable scent to me. Um, so I don't like La Belle. I also really don't like the original Libre from Yves Saint Laurent. I really don't enjoy that fragrance at all. I tried a sample of it quite recently um, because I thought I would actually quite like it, seeing as I love the intense version. I have that one in my collection. So I tried the original and I really couldn't believe how bad it was, in my opinion, you guys. This is all just my opinion. You know, it's probably a, a really nice perfume, but for some reason I don't like either of those fragrances. For me, the original Libra, it was metallic, it was scratchy, it was like, um, if you can imagine the texture of like a Brillo pad, like that scratchiness, really synthetic, chemically, um, watery, like uh, very flat, not much to it, really not interesting and just not a nice smell. It almost reminded me a little bit of air freshener, that type of thing, so I really didn't enjoy Labour and I also do not like Jean-Paul Gaultier Labelle. Question number seven is how do I store my fragrances? So I have a uh, cupboard with a kind of wardrobe in it and I store my fragrances in the drawers basically. I keep them away from lights, I keep them in a dark uh, place, like in my cupboard basically, in the drawers. I did used to um, display them out on my desk, so like the shelf above my desk, um, in quite a bright sunny room and then I realised that that was actually quite bad to do that. So uh, you know that's why I, I've changed that now, I no longer display them out on my desk, I've put them in my cupboard now to keep them out of the sun and to keep them in like a cooler environment. Question number eight is why did you get into perfumes? Um, this is another question that I'm probably going to find really difficult to answer. Um, I would say fragrances in general really appeal to like the creative side in me. Fragrances in general, they're quite a creative thing really. It's quite interesting to look at all the notes and then to smell them and um, to think of the story behind it or to think of what the fragrance is trying to convey, like the mood of the scent. Um, I think it's also really interesting how a fragrance can make you feel as well and how they can improve your moods, how they can be suited to different scenarios, different occasions. All of those things to me are quite creative aspects to the fragrance world and I would say that just everything about perfume, because it's quite a creative thing, um, it appeals to me because I'm a very creative person. So I would say probably that mostly. Question number nine is what is the main reason you declutter a perfume? So I will declutter a fragrance if it no longer inspires me, if I haven't been reaching for it enough. Um, those are the main reasons I would declutter a fragrance because um, basically if I didn't declutter perfumes, then my collection would grow out of control and I would have nowhere to store them. Um, I don't have uh, that much storage where I am right now. I have limited space here, so I really have to be mindful of my perfume collection size. If it grew out of control, then it would cause me quite a lot of stress actually because I would have nowhere to put them all and I would feel really messy and it would get kind of cluttered you know, hence the decluttering <laughs> that I need to do to keep it managed and under control. So yeah, if a perfume no longer inspires me, if I get bored of it, um, I will usually declutter it. Um, if it's not versatile enough, sometimes I might declutter it. If I just find that I don't ever have the right uh, situation to wear the perfume, 
I would maybe declutter a perfume for that reason. It's usually because I'm either bored of it, it doesn't inspire me anymore, uh, I never reach for it, those kind of things. Um, it's very rarely because I dislike it, so, you know, maybe every once in a blue moon I will have a complete blind buy fail, but to be honest, that doesn't happen to me very often. Usually my blind buys are fine, you know, um, so it's not really because I dislike the perfume, it's more just because I need to manage my collection size. Um, <laughs> and I need to get rid of some, you know, so those are the main reasons I would declutter a fragrance. Question 10 is which perfumes have you totally used up? So surprisingly, you guys, not that many. So the majority of my collection is very new, so I only started my perfume collection around two years ago, something like that, so as you can imagine, um, I haven't used that many up, and also because I keep buying more, it's sort of like I have so many to use, um, so therefore I don't use up that many. But two that I have completely used a full bottle of is uh, Narciso Rodriguez for her Eau de Toilette. Uh, that used to be my signature scent and I completely used up a bottle. It's actually a fragrance that I think I will be repurchasing in the near future because I actually kind of miss it. I think it's a really fantastic feminine um, everyday versatile fragrance that I do actually miss quite a lot. And yeah, I used up a full bottle of that fragrance. I think it was a 50ml that I had. And the other perfume I've completely used up is Elie Saab Le Parfum Eau de Toilette. So not, not the one that you can get now, it's the discontinued one that used to be my signature scent as well when I was 18. Um, I have used up a whole bottle of that because, like I say, it used to be my signature. And at that time, that was actually the only fragrance I owned. So I wore it every day or every other day and I used it up. So yeah, Elie Saab Le Parfum Eau de Toilette, which has now been discontinued, and also Narciso Rodriguez for her Eau de Toilette. Question number 11 is, what are my favourite fragrance channels to watch? So uh, I would say the number one channel that I've been watching the most lately is Amy Glam. So I recently discovered her channel and I just absolutely love her videos. Um, her camera picture quality is like so good. Um, she always looks immaculate, she's so beautiful, her makeup skills are just on point, she just has a very lovely presence about her and I just really resonate with her videos. Uh, I would highly recommend her channel as well. Question 12 is, uh, what is the first perfume you bought because of a YouTuber? Now, this was a, this was a question that I couldn't remember, like I really couldn't actually remember which fragrance it was, but I actually think the first fragrance I properly bought because a uh, YouTuber had spoken about it was Narciso Poudre. I had previously tried it years ago and I immediately didn't like it, like I completely dismissed it actually. And I thought that I would never ever want to try that perfume again. But then I started watching YouTube videos and I um, was watching videos from Ollie's mom and she mentioned it quite a few times. And it just got me curious about it again, you guys. I thought, you know what, I think this is actually gonna be a really nice fragrance. So it's because of her that I gave it another chance and now I love it. So yes, I would say that I purchased Narciso Poudre um, because of Ollie's mom. Question 13 is, what is your goal for your perfume collection? Um, I don't really know what my end goal would look like. Um, I'm thinking perhaps, you know, like far down the line, maybe one day I would quite like to have a signature scent or maybe a small pool of fragrances, maybe five perfumes that I just love so much and they're all sort of my signature scent interchangeably, maybe something like that. But on the whole, like, I just enjoy the journey, to be honest with you. Like, I enjoy the declutters, I enjoy uh, acquiring new perfumes and I enjoy the process of discovering um, fragrances. So, you know, in a sense, this is the goal, you know, I'm enjoying the process as it is. Um, but for sure, one day, I think, you know, maybe having a signature scent, I always love the idea of that. I have had signature scents before, before I started my collection. Um, and I think it's really lovely to have a signature perfume. So maybe one day I would like to have a signature scent again. But, um, you know, at the moment, I'm just enjoying the journey, you guys. I love discovering fragrances. I love talking about them. Um, you know, it's, it's just all parts of it and I enjoy it very much. Question 14 is, what is my most expensive perfume that I've ever purchased? Um, that would be Delina Exclusive from Parfum de Marley. I'll just show it again because it's just so beautiful. So that would be this perfume right here. This is the most expensive fragrance I have ever purchased. It was worth every penny to me. I love it so much. 
you can smell the quality, it is just absolutely breathtakingly beautiful. Oh. Question 15 is what is my best blind buy in recent memory? Uh, that would have to be this fragrance right here, Dolce & Gabbana, the only one too. This was a complete blind buy and it is an absolute success, you guys. I love this fragrance. I looked at the notes on Fragrantica, I pretty much knew I'd love it and I was right, so I adore it. Um, very successful blind buy indeed. I just love this fragrance. I've been wearing this one a lot recently, actually, like ever since I bought it. Um, it arrived the other day and I've been wearing it constantly. <laughs> I absolutely love it. So that is Dolce & Gabbana, the only one, too. Another really successful blind buy that I purchased quite recently, actually, was this fragrance here. So this is the latest Kayali Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper 25. Um, the notes are pink pepper, bergamot, saffron, Bulgarian rose, vanilla orchid and sandalwood. Um, and I absolutely love this perfume. So this was a complete blind buy based on reviews which I'd seen and I was not disappointed at all. So that's the gorgeous bottle there. This was a complete blind buy and it was uh, very, very successful indeed. I completely adore this fragrance. So that was another very successful blind buy of mine recently. Question 16 is, what is your partner's favourite scent on you? Um, so I'm single, <laughs> I don't have a partner, but what I will say is Poison Girl is one of my go-to date night scents and um, it does go down very well on a date. I've had compliments on this perfume and it's just a very, it, it's one of those perfumes that just, it makes me feel really good about myself on a date. It kind of gives me that extra confidence. It's very, very feminine, very kind of bold and a soft, flirty kind of way, I don't know, I just love this one you guys. Quite sweet, quite playful, fun, uh, feminine. Oh, it's got that orange blossom, almond, bitter orange, sandalwood. I think there's rose in here as well. It's quite balsamic to me, you get quite a lot of that almond and overall it's just a fantastic date night scent. So um, Poison Girl Eau de Parfum from Dior. Question 17 is if you had a signature scent. Um, again, this is quite tricky, you guys. I really don't know. Um, so my signature scent, I would say, basically at the moment, because my collection is so large and there are so many perfumes I love, um, it's not really a question that I can properly answer right now, to be quite honest with you. But what I will say is this perfume right here, Dolce & Gabbana, the only one. Um, I've been wearing this one a lot, so this has been my one of my most worn perfumes recently. So, so Dolce & Gabbana, the only one, is a fragrance which I've been reaching for probably the most recently. I just can't get enough of this one, you guys, and I've put quite a bit of a dent in there, as you can see. It's a really new perfume to my collection. Well, is it new? It's a few months. I've had it for a few months anyway. And this is 100ml, so actually that's quite a dent in there for me. And I don't really know if this would be like my signature scent, to be honest. I don't know if it would be, but this is this is like the closest answer I could give because this is the perfume I've been wearing the most. So I'll just say this perfume for now. So that is Dolce & Gabbana, the only one. The next question is dupe houses, yes or no? Now for me personally, it kind of depends. So overall, I would rather have the original perfume. I just think um, because I appreciate the artistry of fragrances and I appreciate um, the craftsmanship and I like having the original perfume, you know, that's how I feel. However, with that being said, um, the dupe house Dua fragrances, they actually create fragrances I'm really interested in because they do hybrid scents that you can't find anywhere else. So. Uh, Cherry Casino, this fragrance here, is actually a combination of uh, two inspired by scents in one. So this is a combination of Baccarat Rouge, um, Extra de Parfum and also Tom Ford's Lost Cherry together. So this in itself is a unique perfume to me, it's not just an inspired by. Also Angelic Aphrodisiac right here, this is uh, inspired by Killian, Angel's Share and also Initio um, I always forget which Initio fragrance it is that's the other one in here. I think it's Psychedelic Love. Um, so again, it's two perfumes combined in here. You couldn't find that anywhere else. So these are actually really unique to me. So I really, really appreciate these. Um, the other instance where I really appreciate a Inspired by Scents is when a perfume house will dupe a discontinued perfume. So Frederico Mohora number 359 
is a dupe of um, Alien Essence Absolute. That is a perfume I really wanted to get my hands on and I was quite, you know, saddened to hear that it had been discontinued and, and I never got a chance to pick that one up. Um, however, I do have this one. This fragrance was really kindly gifted to me as well uh, by Frederico Mahora. I really appreciate it because it means that I can smell like, uh, you know, Alien Essence Absolute even though the fragrance has been discontinued. But on the whole, when it comes to just inspired by scents in general, I usually would prefer to just have the original perfume. Question 19 is how often do you wear perfume? So quite often actually, um, every day, you know, in the evenings. I'm quite lucky because basically the job that I do, I'm allowed to wear perfume. I know for some healthcare jobs, it's not really, I don't think it's maybe allowed, but there's some jobs where you shouldn't really wear strong fragrances. But luckily for me, I can wear whatever perfume I want to work. So therefore I wear perfume every day. I wear it even if I don't go out, if I'm staying in, in the house all day, I will still wear fragrances because to be honest, um, as I've progressed in my perfume journey, I've realized that I wear perfume just mostly for myself. It's sort of like um, aromatherapy. I saw a comment from a subscriber just saying that it's their own personal aromatherapy. And I just have to completely agree with that. I think I really resonate with that because for me, perfume is quite an emotional thing. It really makes me feel better. It can really improve my mood. And it's just, it's such a profound thing for me that I, I would still wear fragrance even if there was no one else around me to smell it. Um, so I wear it quite a lot for that reason. I wear it to bed, like I say, um, to work on a day off, like if I'm going out, of course. So so pretty much all the time, I would say. <laughs> Unless I had a headache or if I wasn't feeling well, like if I felt ill or if there was some strange circumstance, then I might not wear fragrance. But as long as I'm happy and healthy and just going about my daily life, I usually wear perfume. Question 20 is, what is the last perfume I let go of and why? So I recently had a declutter video which you might have seen, I got rid of five perfumes, I think. Uh, so I got rid of Prada Candy, I got rid of La Nuit Tresor Eau de Toilette, and I got rid of uh, Chloe Love Story, I got rid of Rose to Chloe. So those are a few fragrances I recently decluttered because they just didn't inspire me anymore because I wasn't reaching for them and the usual reasons. Question 21 is, what is a perfume you'd most like to buy? So I do have my eye on a few fragrances, to be honest with you, but one in particular is Rocha um, Essence Pour Femme 51. Um, so from their Essence to Parfum line. I do have Danger from Rocha Parfums, which I absolutely love. I really adore this fragrance. <sighs> oh, this perfume is amazing. So. Um, Rocha Parfums were very generous and they gifted me Danger, which I love and I've been wearing it so, so much recently. Um, but I do also have their sample set, um, which I picked up prior to receiving this. And I've tried them all and there are quite a few from the line that I really adore. So number 51, Pour Femme, is a perfume which I love. I've used up my little sample of that one. And um, that was one of the fragrances I was kind of debating you know, when I was trying to decide which fragrance I would choose, it was kind of between 51, uh, this Danger and Reckless. Those were the three that I absolutely loved. So I would say number 51 is on my radar for sure, but obviously they're quite, um, they're not cheap perfumes. So I'm sort of holding off a little while to save up a bit for it because yeah, it's not a cheap perfume. <laughs> but I would say Rocha Parfums, number 51 Parfum from the Essence de Parfum line is the next fragrance I would absolutely love to pick up. Question 22 is, what is a perfume everyone seems to like but you don't? So I think there's a few actually. So Jean-Paul Gaultier Labelle, I don't understand. I don't really get the hype around that one. It's, to me, it's just a very, very saccharine, sweet, synthetic, overbearing, suffocating, cloying fragrance. Um, so, you know, that's just my own personal opinion on the fragrance. The other perfume I would say that I'm not blown away by is the original Delina from Parfum de Marley. So I don't really understand why so many people, well, I can, I can understand why so many people love it, but to me, it's nothing really that special. Just the original Delina. I don't know why you guys, I just don't love it that much, but I love Delina Exclusive. And to me, they are very different perfumes. Um, so yeah, two perfumes that I don't like that everyone else seems to enjoy would be Delina, the original from Parfum de Marley, and also Jean-Paul Gaultier Labelle. 
Question 23 is what is my favourite thing about perfume in general? Um, probably just the sensory experience of it. Um, you know, smell is a very, it's quite an intimate sense. You know, if you smell something, it can have quite a profound effect on your moods. It's, it can feel like you're having a treat sometimes. Um, if I wear a really sweet gourmand fragrance, it can feel like I'm actually treating myself to a dessert sometimes. Um, so I love the sensory nature of it. I love how uh, creative it is, like I've mentioned before. It's quite a creative thing in general. I love the bottle designs. I love the um, inspirations behind the scents. I love the moods that they can evoke. And um, I just love everything about fragrances, to be honest. I think they're a very creative thing. They're almost like an art form or... Um, would you let me know in the comments if you think that perfume is an art? I kind of think it is. I think that they're almost like an art form in themselves. Please let me know what you think in the comments. I'd be really interested to know if you agree with me on that. Um, but yeah, I just, all of those reasons, to be honest, you guys. Question 24 is, am I a blind buyer or do I try before I buy? So if I can, I will try the fragrance, basically. Um, but if I cannot try it, then uh, I will usually blind buy it, providing that it's not super expensive. I would never blind buy a super expensive niche fragrance that I have had no uh, chance to try. I would just never do that, you guys. Um, but as long as it's sort of in the designer price category and if I'm like really, really certain I will love it after looking at the notes and things like that, then I will usually trust myself to blind buy it. On the whole, like most of my blind buys have been very successful. There have only been, you know, a handful of fails. Um, so yeah, there's that, but I would never blind buy a super expensive fragrance. I just wouldn't do that. I would always try and order samples or try it at a shop if I can um, and things like that. So on the whole, I try before I buy, but having said that, I do blind buy a lot, you guys, but that's only because I know my tastes. And I'm usually quite good at using my own judgment when it comes to blind buying and things like that, but it can vary. Question 25. <laughs> This is the question, I don't know why, but I feel nervous answering this question. Um, so it is, if you created your own perfume, what would it smell like? What would the notes be? Um, so basically you have to understand that the type of person I am, I'm an overthinker, I am a perfectionist, I, uh, I'm also a procrastinator for those reasons. So I'm kind of a perfectionist. Um, I like to get things right and I'm an overthinker, you know. So, you know, with that in mind, I just couldn't say right now, I could not say what the notes would be. Um, what I think I could say just now is that it would most likely be quite a sweet scent, maybe quite powdery. And I would probably want it to have something a little bit different about it without being too much. So I would want it to smell quite interesting and unique without it being too out there. Um, so I would want it to be quite likeable, I would want it to be quite addictive and Moorish, um, but I would want it to have a little something about it that made it a little bit unusual, but not overly so. Um, so I feel like that's all I can really say, you guys. It's the kind of thing that I would overthink and I would want to make it perfect, that, that kind of thing. So it's not something I can just say. Um, I hope that makes sense. So there we have it. Those are my 25 questions, which were meant to be answered in under 25 minutes, but you know, we're at 50 minutes now on my monitor. By the time I've edited it, it will probably still be over the 25 minutes, but there you have it. I, I tried my best. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below. I always love reading through your wonderful comments. Uh, thank you again for watching. Take care and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.